Want to learn about stocks, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and the metaverse? Join richtv.io. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Equilium Inc., Bruce Steele. How are you doing today, Bruce? Uh, I'm very well, thanks, Rich. Very much appreciate you having me on the show today. Very excited to have you on the show and learn more about Equilium Inc. And Bruce, my first question is, once again, pleasure to have you on the show. Really looking forward to learning more about Equilium Inc. Can you tell us how you got involved in the company and how long you've been involved with the company? Sure. So uh, I've been involved in the company from the very beginning days. Uh, my uh, colleague, Steve Connolly, our chief scientific officer, uh, and Dan Bradbury, uh, our um, uh, executive uh, board chair, uh, the three of us started the company back in 2017 around a desire to build a uh, you know leading, call, uh, leading biotech company focused on developing novel therapeutics for autoimmune and inflammatory disorders of high unmet medical need. And um, so we, you know, we kind of conceived of the company and uh, started this together. Uh, I guess it's now coming up on six years. Fantastic. Congratulations on all of your success so far. Now, 2022 was a very rough year in the markets. And despite the market conditions, can you tell us what were your top three milestones that Equilium hit that shareholders should be excited about? Sure, definitely a very challenging year for the sector. And, uh, you know, notwithstanding those challenges, uh, we uh, decided to kind of build the company during the year. Uh, so in terms of three, you know, major objectives and accomplishments, uh, first was we acquired a, a local Southern California biotech company, uh, Bionis Therapeutics, to expand our pipeline of first-in-class novel therapeutic agents. So through that acquisition, we added two drug candidates to our uh, portfolio and, uh, and as well an underlying novel discovery platform for uh, the ability to generate additional drug candidates. But uh, importantly, two drug candidates to the pipeline, including one that had already been through a significant proof of concept evaluation in the clinic. Uh, both of those drugs are now back in clinical development, um, uh, which was a you know primary objective following that acquisition was to get uh, those programs back uh, into patients. And then um, the next was uh, reading out uh, the uh, interim data from our lupus nephritis study of edalizumab, uh, which was our foundational program. Uh, so we provided some key interim updates around that program back in September timeframe, uh, showing that edalizumab appears to be uh, quite active uh, in terms of addressing the underlying uh, high levels of proteinuria afflicting these patients that drive uh, comorbidities and potential mortality in that patient population. Uh, we also, uh, related to elizumab, uh, started a phase three study in acute GVHD. So that uh, study is now actively uh, enrolling and recruiting patients. So, you know, we crossed from sort of an early stage development company into a late stage development company uh, with that program, with the initiation of our uh, phase three equator study in acute GVHD. And then based on those two events during the course of the year, uh, in terms of a third key milestone, which we announced in December, uh, was a strategic partnership with Omo, uh, with Ono Pharmaceutical uh, out of Japan. This is one of Japan's top bar pharmaceutical companies where we struck a strategic partnership whereby they uh, have now an option to acquire uh, Edalizumab uh, based on delivering additional data from those two studies uh, that I just mentioned. Very importantly, that strategic partnership uh, very much stabilized Aquilium from a cash standpoint um, and a runway standpoint, where we now, based on that partnership, uh, expect to have operating runway as we stand today, uh, comfortably into the 2025 timeframe. Uh, so completely removing any near-term needs for us to raise additional capital. Uh, if Ono exercises their option uh, during the option period, uh, we would expect that would significantly further extend our operating runway, uh, probably into 2026 or beyond. Uh, based on, uh, you know, what will be, uh, you know, developing at the time. So really gave us both kind of a, a near-term reprieve from the capital markets and potentially even a longer-term one uh, if they exercise their option, uh, but basically gives us a very strong cash balance at the end of the year, uh, which included uh, 26, uh, approximately a $26 million upfront payment for the option exercise, 
as well as reimbursement from Q3 and Q4 expenses related to Elizamab. Uh, so we're very pleased with that transaction and what it does to uh, stabilize Equilium and allow us to you know, fully fund our wholly owned assets with our EQ 101 and 102 programs that I mentioned uh, that we acquired earlier this year. Wow, sounds like you guys have had a really busy year and congratulations on achieving all of your milestones. Now with 2023 just getting started, I'm sure the company has a lot of goals that you wanna hit this year. Can you tell us what are the three main milestones that shareholders should be looking for this year? Yeah, so uh, as mentioned, we have initiated now our phase two study uh, of EQ101. This is our first in class novel therapeutic targeting IL2, 9, and 15. And uh, we've initiated this phase two study in patients with alopecia areata. Uh, this is an area of high end medical need. We've just seen the first uh, drug approved, which is a JAK inhibitor for this uh, a therapeutic indication. Um, that, uh, you know, that approach looks good, but continues to have sort of the uh, baggage uh, that affects all JAK inhibitors based on cytotoxicity um, and other side effects. So, uh, you know, we know patients across therapeutic areas uh, that respond to JAK inhibitors are in need of uh, programs that are potentially as or more efficacious, but with a better safety profile. And we think our approach with EQ101 may be able to provide that. Um, so we have initiated that study uh, during the second half of last year. Uh, we expect to see um, some initial data from that program during the, during the course of 2023. Uh, so we think that's going to be some, you know, potentially very exciting data for us. Uh, and we're the only uh, drug in development with this uh, targeting approach of uh, targeting IL-2, 9, and 15 uh, to treat these patients with alopecia areata. Uh, the second uh, program that we wholly own uh, EQ-102 uh, is, again, a first-in-class novel therapeutic targeting IL-15 and 21 selectively. Uh, we, uh, during the second half of last year, initiated our initial study in patients um, under a SAD and MAD program in patients, uh, sorry, in normal healthy volunteers. Um, we're moving quite uh, quickly through that uh, course of the SAD-MAD program. And then following that, we expect to initiate uh, the evaluation of that program in patients with celiac disease. Uh, again, an area of very high in the need where today there are no drug approved, uh, no drugs approved to treat uh, patients with celiac disease. So uh, during the course of this year, we hope to move into that proof of concept study in patients with celiac disease, assuming the sad mad portion uh, of the study is successful. And then the third key milestone is that we expect to deliver top line data from our study in lupus nephritis of elizumab. Uh, this is our, our program that's partnered with Ono Pharmaceutical. And uh, that top line data is one of the key deliverables under that partnership that Ono is expecting to see, uh, in addition to uh, data from our QG VHD phase three study in, uh, that's ongoing as well, uh, that we would expect to follow the LN data. So uh, I'd say during 2023, three key data events, the EQ101 alopecia areata phase two initial data, uh, data from our uh, study of EQ102 and SAD, MAD, healthy volunteers moving into celiac disease patients, uh, and then our LN study of Elizabeth. Wow, sounds like 2023 is going to be a busy year, a lot of catalysts. Now, you touched on revenue, and we love to learn about you know revenue guidance here at Rich TV Live with our community of retail and institutional investors. In the next three years, what would you say are the revenue goals for Aquilium? So, uh, you know, in terms of revenue, uh, the, the strategic partnership we uh, struck with Ono Pharmaceutical uh, company earlier, uh, sorry, at the at the end of last year in December, uh, provided us some uh, revenues in terms of upfront payments from Ono for that uh, strategic partnership agreement. Uh, they will continue to reimburse us for R and D expenses related to the development of Elizabeth uh, through their option exercise period, which we expect will be approximately a two year period. Um, if they uh, opt in on the program, we would get additional revenue from their uh, option exercise um, fee. Uh, as well as potential milestone uh, revenues from uh, certain events related to Elizabeth development uh, and, and approval. So, uh, you know, we think we have some nice revenue opportunities from the uh, partnership with Ono. The uh, first product revenue uh, would likely be achieved uh, on the approval of the acute GVHD uh, indication if that program is successful in phase three development. Um, and that revenue would either accrue to Ono or to Aquilium. Uh, depending upon the outcome of their uh, of their option period. So uh, we're still a few years away from product revenue, but um, you know we've had some nice revenue realized from the Ono partnership and expect to continue to receive 
um, uh, you know, payments from ONO as we're going through the uh, research and development program and potentially when they uh, would they exercise. Um, and uh, again, you know, our, our runway guidance uh, has extended considerably uh, based on prior to that transaction into the 2025 timeframe, uh, virtually uh, sort of alleviating any near term financing requirements, uh, which certainly in this challenging capital market environment uh, gives us a, a pretty enviable position from that standpoint. Absolutely agree with you. Obviously, right now, cash is king. Can you give us a quick review of your capital structure? That's very important to us understanding you know, your total shares, total shares outstanding, how much money the company also has in the bank. Can you give us an update on those two key areas? Sure. So uh, we have approximately um, uh, 34 to 35 million shares outstanding. And all of this information obviously is available in our regulatory filings. Um, from a cash standpoint, we have not provided our year in cash uh, just yet. Um, uh, you can refer to uh, our Q3 um, uh, cash position. Um, and we have, uh, you know, based on the Q3 uh, cash, uh, which was a $44.5 million cash balance at that standpoint, um, and our operating cash burn in Q3 was around $13 million. You can sort of uh, back into what our cash uh, number should be at the end of the year when you factor in the Ono transaction, uh, where we brought in a, an additional $26 million up front, plus reimbursement for Elizamab spending for all of Q3 and the advances for Q4 and Q1 of this year. So uh, we haven't given a specific cash number, but I think uh, people will be very pleased to see our cash balance uh, when we come out with our uh, 10K um, you know, uh, following uh, the end of the year. Bruce, another thing that's really important to our community is finding companies that have CEOs and directors that have skin in the game. Can you talk a little bit about your position in the company and how many shares you're holding? Yeah, Rich, that's a you know great question. So, uh, you know, when we started the company, uh, we had a very concentrated shareholder base with the three founders as well as our uh, strategic partner, Biocon. Um, and so, you know, we've been very judicious about how and when we've raised capital um, over the, uh, you know, duration uh, since we started the company. And so of the, you know, roughly 34 and a half million or so shares outstanding, um, you know, my uh, co-founder and our uh, executive chair, uh, Dan Bradbury and I uh, still own all of the shares we've ever owned. We've not sold any stock uh, since inception of the company. Um, and I think collectively we own uh, over 20% of the company as we sit here today. Um, so we are, you know, completely aligned with shareholders. And it's worth noting that, you know, the biotech sector is highly capital intensive. And, and unfortunately, uh, a lot of companies, and I would say, you know, perhaps a majority of companies do get to a point where the management teams uh, are somewhat misaligned with shareholder interests in that, you know, they'll raise money at sort of any price, not worry about dilution, uh, with the expectation that they'll kind of get re-upped on their stock options. Um, we've never had that mindset here. Uh, we've always had the mindset of wanting to be highly aligned with uh, with our shareholders. And uh, our cap structure today uh, still uh, indicates that alignment. Um, so we, we, you know, we think carefully about what we do here. Uh, we think carefully about dilution um, and, uh, you know, how we're planning to kind of build and grow the company uh, and as mentioned earlier, the recent announcement around the strategic uh, partnership with Ono Pharmaceutical uh, has really eliminated any near-term financing requirement for the company. And we were very pleased to have been able to accomplish that, uh, recognizing uh, that we expect 2023 to continue to be a challenging uh, year for the sector, certainly from a capital market standpoint. Uh, the corollary to that is it presents you know, a great opportunity uh, for investors to think about focusing on companies that can create, you know, significant value on their existing pipeline, on their existing cash. And we very much fit that uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, mode and thesis right now. Fantastic. And is there anything else you want institutional investors, retail investors, anyone that's watching to take away from this interview today? Yeah, I think it's that, uh, you know, our mission really is to dramatically change the lives of patients with severe autoimmune inflammatory disorders. Uh, we have three distinct novel first-in-class programs that we think mechanistically are highly differentiated from other programs that are approved and in development for the, the indications we're pursuing. Um, we have, uh, you know, strategic collaboration uh, partnership with Ono Pharmaceutical, you know, a, a leading Japanese pharma company. Uh, that really gives us great financial uh, foundation going forward. Uh, 
uh, where we don't need to go to the capital markets, uh, certainly during the course of this year and, and you know, likely not until sort of the 2025 timeframe, which is the uh, runway guidance we've provided at this point, um, and perhaps longer if, uh, you know, the ONO partnership uh, continues to uh, play out as we hope that it may. And uh, we're looking forward to some key catalysts this year from our wholly owned pipeline uh, of EQ 101 and 102 in both the Alopecia Ariata study, uh, as well as our initial first in man uh, development program with EQ 102. So it should be a very exciting year for us. And uh, we're you know incredibly pleased to have very strong uh, you know partnership with Ono that gives us uh, you know very sound footing as we uh, head into the beginning of the year. My last question, Bruce, what is the best way for investors that have any questions to get in touch with the company? Yeah, so uh, they can reach out to us um, on our website is our uh, email address. It goes uh, you know into our head of IR and we're you know happy to follow up with investors that may have questions about the programs and our strategy. Uh, so they can, uh, you know, we would refer them to our website for additional information um, on the clinical development programs, on our ONO partnership, uh, as well as information on how to reach us. Um, so it's uh, aquiliumbio.com, uh, E-Q-U-I-L-L-I-U-M-B-I-O.com, and uh, we'd be happy to follow up. Fantastic. Now, I must remind investors that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss. In saying that, we feel that this is a company that's very undervalued, underappreciated, and underexposed. Take a look at the symbol EQ on the NASDAQ. And thank you so much for joining us today, the CEO of Aquilium Inc., Bruce Steele. Thank you for joining us today, Bruce. Rich, greatly appreciate your time, and uh, we hope this was useful for your audience. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. And we'd love to have you back in the future. And for those of you that are watching, thank you for watching. For those of you that are not watching, if you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners. We bring you the news, CO interviews, chart analysis, and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody. This is Rich from Rich TV Live with the CEO of Aquilium Inc. symbol EQ on the NASDAQ with Bruce Steele saying, have a nice day. We'll see you soon.